What's going on? Welcome to this Rexing V1P Max dash cam comprehensive review. This dash cam is one of Rexing's current flagship models, so I'm going to put it to the test for you and show you every feature in detail because it is a higher end camera after all. So I'll show you everything you should consider before you add it to your shopping cart. Now, I do own Rexing's V1P third generation and their modular V5 model as well, but they did send me this unit for me to review for you guys. But as always, I will objectively showcase its features and offer my honest opinion. If you're short on time, check out the video stamps on the video description to get to a specific section. Some of the most attractive features of this dash cam are its ability to shoot 4K and unlike other models I've tested, this model can record 4K even when the rear camera is recording and enabled, which is definitely nice. It also has a built-in GPS logger, parking mode, Wi-Fi, and it is super capacitor based so it can withstand extreme temperatures. As you can see here, everything that you need to get going is included, except the memory card unless you purchase this in a bundle. The dash cam feels pretty solid in the hand and of high quality. The lens articulates to support any angle of the windshield. Around the camera, there are a few vents, some for heat dissipation and others for the built-in speaker. On the left here, you will find the plug for the rear-facing camera and right below it a GPS plug that is reserved for a future firmware update. The screen in the front is a decent size, but I will mention that it is not touchscreen. Right below it are all of the camera's buttons that serve different purposes depending on how you press them, but more on that in a second. On the right hand side here you have the power plug where you will plug in your power adapter and right above it your SD card slot. I do wish these were reversed so that you could remove the SD card without unplugging the dash cam. When the dash cam receives power, it automatically starts recording, which is what you want. You can tell that Rexing went with a minimalistic design, at least as far as the display goes. The display is uncluttered, showing you only if it's recording audio, whether Wi-Fi is on or off, the GPS status, whether it's currently recording, and the date and time down here. Pushing the menu button once takes you to the media settings and hitting it again to the system settings. Every time you exit the menus, the camera starts recording automatically to ensure that you are always covered. So that can be a bit frustrating when setting the camera up. When you are navigating the menus, the OK button selects the current item. The record button doubles as your up or left button. The microphone button is your down or right button. And the menu button is your back button. It does take some getting used to, but that is what we have. The resolutions you can pick from are here, but I really like that there is an option for 60 frames per second here, although only at full HD resolution, but better than nothing. Video and code has both H.264 and H.265, and as far as video quality, you can see here the difference, if any, and the size difference is negligible. Decide for yourself which fits the bill, but H.265 is more modern and it's nice to see it as an option. Loop recording lets you decide between one, two, or three minute clips. I set mine to three minutes. Just remember the shorter the clip, the more you will generate. The recording type lets you select between normal and lapsed. Normal is your standard real time video and lapse records a time lapse more suitable for sitting in a parking lot for an extended period of time. The next two, flip and mirror, lets you flip or invert the video if you desire. For normal video, these two will remain off. Distortion correction corrects the distortion on the 170 degree wide angle video, but there's no such thing as a free lunch. You can see here that it zooms in to get that done, so you lose some of your picture on the edges. I would just recommend leaving that off. If you want to avoid video flicker, leave the anti-flicker set to 60 hertz if you live in North America and 50 hertz elsewhere. If you still have issues, try the opposite just in case. Audio on or off toggles sound on the video. OSD is your on-screen display and that toggles that on or off. Park and monitor, if you have a smart hardwire kit, that'll enable that feature on or off. I will link to my detailed installation video of the hard smart wire kit above and in the video description, so check that out. If you have that kit, the dash cam will automatically start recording if your vehicle is hit. For instance, while sitting in a parking lot, I do recommend that kit for that feature. For the system settings, the screensaver shuts off the screen, not the camera, after a certain amount of time. The gravity sensor is meant to detect an accident so that the dash cam locks the current recording so that it doesn't get overwritten. You have to experiment with the sensitivity based on where you live because giant potholes can trick the system into thinking you got into an accident. The volume button is for the volume of the dash cam speaker, not the video's audio. Key tone is for the beep every time you push a button. You can set that to low or high. The boot sound is the sound the dash cam makes when you turn it on. And the time, time zone, and daylight savings are self-explanatory and are important if you want the timestamp of the video to be accurate. And the speed unit is strictly a matter of preference as is the time format that you see here. 
GPS info shows you the satellites you're locked into and their particular signal strength if you want to know, and the language lets you select your own. Format SD is important and is where you would go to format a brand new card after updating the firmware or if you're having issues. And speaking of issues, you can set all of your settings to factory defaults right here if you need to as well. Wi-Fi allows you to turn Wi-Fi on or off, but there is an easier way to do this and we'll go over that in a sec. The final item here is the about display and that shows you important information like your current firmware version. There's a few other settings that you might not figure out. If you long press on the record button, the dash cam will take a picture and save it. If you long press the microphone button, you will toggle the sound recording on or off. But if you short press it, you will toggle between the different display modes if you have the rear view camera connected. And if you long press the menu button, you will access all of the video and photo albums on the dash cam. As you can probably guess, the EMR files are the emergency files and the norm are your normal files. If you hit OK, you'll access the folder and then you can scroll to the file that you want. Hit OK and view it right on the camera if you need to. You can play it at one, two, four or eight times the original speed. Under normal circumstances, while recording, if you hit the OK button, you will trigger an EMR or emergency recording. These are super helpful because the camera can generate a lot of files, but this will take the current recording and save it in a separate folder that will not be overwritten. The dash cam does have Wi-Fi capabilities and it is much easier to review and transfer files on your phone than on the camera itself. Whether you have Apple or Android, you can download the Rexing Connect app. When you do, make sure that you give the camera all of the permissions that it needs to work properly, like you see right here. Once it's good to go, we're gonna turn on the Wi-Fi on the camera itself by long pressing the OK button. On the camera screen, you will see the network name and the password, and we have to connect to that network on our phones. So I'm gonna get into my Wi-Fi settings and find that network and connect to it. Then I can back out of that menu and open up the Rexing Connect app. Right in the middle of the screen, we'll click on connect, give it a second, and now we are in. And as you can see here, once you're in, your camera will stream the image to your phone. If you had another camera connected, like the rear camera, you can switch between them by hitting the change view button. You can stop the recording and then change into photo mode, and then take the snapshots right from your phone. If you press the settings tab down here, you can access all of the settings that we just went over, and it is much more intuitive to do on the phone. If you back out and press this video tab down here, it'll take you to all of the videos on the camera. You can scroll through and if you find one that you want to review, you can press it and it'll start playing, which is nice because most phone screens are much larger than the dash cam. You can share a five to 15 second clip by pressing this icon here. You can trim the video, add music if you wish, and then share it on social media. Not something that I care about, but it's there. More useful is the ability to long press on the video file that you want and then download it in full resolution to your phone. We can do the same with the photos on the dash cam. Okay, so a really cool feature is GPS tracking. If you go to Rexing's website, you can download the Rexing GPS video player for this camera or any other camera that may support it. Once downloaded, double click on the icon to open the program and then simply drag the video you want to view to the center here. As soon as you do that, the video automatically starts playing. On the right hand side here, you will see a Google map window with the entire trip mapped out. As the video plays, the exact location of the car is shown on the map. You can zoom in or out over here and even overlay the satellite image onto it like this. This is a very useful feature, although this app is a bit buggy, especially if you're playing 4K files on it. And if there's a way to make this map portion bigger, I could not figure it out. There is room for improvement, but it is functional. So let me go over some pros and cons and offer some tips as I show you unedited footage in 4K. This dash cam has very good 4K video straight from the camera. I was surprised to see that they trimmed down the video settings almost completely, which means that in camera, there isn't much you can do to the quality of the video output. On other Rexing models, the opposite was the case, so this might be a pro for some and a con for others. Keep in mind that functionality can easily be added later via a firmware update. What you want the camera to do, which is record high quality video reliably, it does well. But the most expensive dash cam is basically a brick without a good SD card to go with it. These dash cams require high speed cards made for this purpose. Rexing has a good write-up on their website, so I'll link to that in the video description. This really is crucial, and I will highly advise to format the SD card and camera, update the camera's firmware when you get the camera, and I know it sounds basic, but make sure that the lens is always clean. This is especially crucial for nighttime performance. And speaking of nighttime, I found the nighttime video adequate. 
All of this video was taken on a very dark moonless night, so it's as bad as it gets. Remember that at night the ISO is boosted considerably, but I feel confident that the video would be useful should an accident happen at night. The rear facing camera, on the other hand, was pretty bad mostly due to the video being 1080p and the camera facing outward through a very dark tinted window. So this is me speaking in a conversational volume so that you know what it sounds like if you wanted to record the noises and the sounds inside of your cabin. The main pros for this camera are its parking monitor feature, built-in GPS and logger, the very practical Wi-Fi and app, and the very nice 4K that records even in dual mode. Some cons include limited video settings. I would like the ability to at least change the exposure if I find the video too bright or too dark because the camera doesn't always get it right. Menu navigation takes some time to get used to and can be frustrating. The GPS logger, while useful, can use some work and the dash cam is on the expensive side. I have no doubt that the camera will be reliable in the long term and I'm pleased with a front facing video quality. It seems that Rexing designed the camera to be a reliable workhorse that requires very little input from the driver once you set it up and after all that is what is important. If you have a question I didn't answer be sure to ask it in the comments section and check out the video description for more information as well as product links. Thanks for watching I'll see you next video take care.